His mom's an angel and his dad's the devil. And he's a loser. Here's me, sitting on a tree and stalking a lady who was about to reveal Victoria's secret. Okay, that's not exactly me, but I respect the man's devotion. Wine, picnic basket, he's enjoying the afternoon like all of us would love to. We almost see the woman in her Eve costume, but suddenly, her little son walks into the room. The man calls the woman's phone and asks the kid to get out of the room. That was a bit too much and the man gets revealed in seconds. Mission failed, we'll get him next time. The man falls off the tree, straight to hell. That's what I call a shortcut of life. Forget about that loser and let's proceed to the main hero, Little Nicky, the youngest son of the devil himself. He's jamming in his room, enjoying Hell's life and stuff, when Jimmy walks in and calls Nicky for a meeting. It's time to discuss who's going to rule Hell for the next 10,000 years. There's Cassius and Adrian, the two older brothers of Nicky. By the way, Cassius hit Nicky with a shovel, so that's why he's now walking and talking like Quasimodo. Cassius breaks Nicky's balls, literally, while their father walks in. So, the Prince of Darkness decides who will be the next ruler of Hell. Smart and ruthless Adrian, strong and tough Cassius, or sweet boy Nicky. No one. Dad will remain the prime devil. Then what was the point of this meeting anyways? Maybe just to show his sons how he's shoving a pineapple up Hitler's... Uh, yeah. Adrian and Cassius decide they're tired of waiting for their dad to give them a throne. They want to go up to Earth and create a Hell there. Wait, Ohio already exists. Second Ohio? The world wouldn't stand it. The brothers get through the portal that brings souls to hell and immediately freeze it. This means no new souls will get into hell and the devil dad will die without them. It's decided that our hero little Nicky will go to earth to bring the two brothers down. Dad gives him a flask. This flask will suck in Adrian and Cassius and all Nicky has to do is bring them to the frozen gate. Nicky gets up to earth and instantly enjoys it until the train hits him. Oops, back to hell. Second attempt, but now a bulldog named Beefy accompanies Nicky. They go on a mission to find the two brothers. It's not going to be easy. The brothers can possess any person in the world. Here's a tip, Nicky. Check Mr. President first. And Bieber looks sussy after that bug bit him. Nicky slowly gets used to Earth, gets some warm clothes, and devours Popeye chicken. Best pick for the devil's son, but I would suggest KFC. Imagine him going to the toilet after. Nicky has to learn everything like a little baby, how to eat and not get killed by a bus. He also finds a place where he'll stay until he finds his brothers. Unfortunately, it will not be Madonna's mansion because Beefy spent all the money on booze and sussy dancers, so he'll have to live with a roommate. Meanwhile, we find out that Adrian turned into the priest, while Cassius became the mayor of New York. Solid pick. Who's possessing Uncle Joe then? The brothers use the Sunday Mass to push people into the world of sin, and it works. More Mr. Beast subscribers. Nicky doesn't get any further with the searching. He literally stops every civilian and asks them if they're his brothers. Well, I can't say that would never work. I found a girlfriend that way. She dumped me after eating two Big Mac extra large menus for my money. Tired of searches, Nicky falls asleep and instantly gets robbed. Central Park moment. Two dudes come up to wake Nicky up. They love his devilish style. Probably some garbage rockers. Eh, love him. Nicky runs around the city to find who stole his flask and actually finds it. He confronts the thief with little success, but a lovely lady hears what's happening and helps Nicky get his property back. Run away from that devil breath, girl. You're too good for this world. Not even talking about hell or Ohio. The couple enjoys small talk and goes for a walk with Gelati. Can Adam Sandler acting like a creep get a score? Watch till the end to find out. Oh nice, the man licks the girl's hand and she enjoys it. I guess this Valerie girl is into some dark stuff too. You know, still waters run deep. Adrian and Cassius enjoy power by lowering the legal drinking age from 21 to 10. Wait, is that a hell stuff? They're not moving to New York. I'll still have to wait for half a year to drink legally. Suddenly, Nicky and Valerie pass by Adrian. He uses mental skills to make Nicky say some gross stuff to Valerie. You're a gross pig, I'm against abortion. Really creepy stuff. Valerie gets mad and leaves. Never worked for me either. Nikki confronts Adrian and asks him to go back to hell. But Adrian answers by sending back Nikki. Ouch, that's the third death for the poor imp. Or was it the fourth one? Already lost count. Back home, Beefy tries to teach Nikki how to release his evil powers. He practices on a can of cola, turning it into something evil. Pig's blood? Human feces? Belle Delphine's bathwater? For now, he managed to turn it into Pepsi. Good enough for the first try, but he should hurry up releasing his evil skills. Dad's got not much time left. Meanwhile, Cassius enjoys evil time by corrupting the basketball game. Nikki sees him on the TV and goes to the match. The crowd is fierce with the referee ruining the game, so Nikki has to score a ball. If he scores, everyone gets free pizza. He tries it with his superpowers once. The ball explodes. He tries it the second time. Cassius stops the ball. They go on a classic 1v1. Rust moment. Suddenly, evil powers come to Nikki and he scores an amazing LeBron James shot. Then, Nikki tricks Cassius into drinking from a flask like it gives him extra powers. And the guy gets sucked in. One down, one more to go. The dudes from the park turn over and happily proceed back home to celebrate their success. 
With Beefy and Nikki's roommate, they eat drugged cake and laugh. I call it the day before Friday. Suddenly, the party starts talking about girls, and Nikki remembers Valerie, her hand that tasted like coconut, her eyes that looked so huge behind the funny-looking glasses. Nikki calls off the party and goes after Valerie. He finds her enjoying the afternoon. Valerie notices Nikki, opens the window, and uses pepper spray at him. You might doubt it, but that's how my dad met my mom, so it works 100% of the time. Nikki falls down, but Valerie screams, Don't die! So Nikki floats instead of turning into a chocolate crap. Love magic works. Nikki comes up to Valerie, but she punches him. Still can't forget he is against abortions. But you know what they say. Fights equal love. Nikki tells her the story of himself. How his dad is the devil. How he tries to find his brothers who want to turn the planet into Ohio. Valerie eats it up like gelati. So they go for a romantic flight over New York. Classy. The following day, Nikki's all around the news. Adrian accused him of being a mass murderer. Nikki doesn't know yet. He enjoys the morning like he just clapped some cheeks. But he suspects something when people around him start to hunt for him. Adrian gave a $50 million bounty for anyone who catches the so-called murderer. So Nikki tries to prove that he's not a monster by turning into a thousand deadly spiders and attacking civilians. Not the best way to earn popularity, but I do like him more now. At home, Nikki finds out Adrian deepfaked his face and put it on Tony Montana to make Nikki look evil. Works like a charm. Well, if it works today with Margot Robbie in 18 plus films, why couldn't it work 20 years ago? The team doesn't know what to do next, so Nikki gets killed and goes back to hell for dad's advice. But dad lost both his ears and half his body, so he's not a great helper in his condition. Meanwhile, rock boys come to the police station to turn Nikki over to the police chief, possessed by Adrian. The police get to Hal's entrance, where Beefy and the roommate are waiting for Nikki's return. Doggy and Baldy get arrested while Adrian and the boys set up a trap. Suddenly, some hobo turns in and traders steal his booze. It's Peppermint Snaps, and Adrian loves it. What a coincidence. The boys handle the drink for Adrian, but the devil's son sees it's a sussy situation. Adrian reveals one of the rockers as Nikki and gets him out of his body cover. In the police station, Beefy uses his hot as hell pee to smoke out the officers and escape. Adrian tries to capture Nikki in his flask and uses Valerie as a hostage. Get in or she dies. Top 10 pickup lines for Sigma males. Beefy comes to save the situation right on time. He throws an arrow from his pee pee at Adrian, so he and Valerie fall on the railways. Nikki jumps, saves Valerie, and dies from a train together with Adrian. Nice, so mission accomplished? Well, not so fast. Adrian does manage to get into hell. But Nikki, well, for some reason, he lands in heaven. What the hell? How can the son of the devil land there? Nikki meets three beautiful angels who reveal his real family history. Turns out, Nikki's mom wasn't a mountain goat, but an angel. Yep, this blonde one. Meanwhile in hell, Adrian finds out that since his father is so weak, he can just sit on the throne and become the Prince of Darkness. And he successfully does it. What would you know? While in heaven, Nikki finds out that he got so lucky because he self-sacrificed himself. But there's no time for enjoying hot angels. Adrian turns Earth into a hell's party, and all Nikki's gang is captured. In 15 minutes, when his dad will finally die, Adrian will kill the whole of New York and get their souls. Little Nikki boy decides he should go back to Earth. But how? He's stupid and weak. Relatable. His mom tells him he's got an inner light and will definitely beat Adrian with it. She also hands him a glowing ball. Not sure what it is, but it'll work when needed. Nikki returns to Earth and uses the power of goodness to turn the imps on his side. He then challenges Adrian and they both perform a good slash evil duel. Then they fight with hands, with pillows, based on the Bible by the way. Nikki almost gets Adrian in the flask then Adrian almost does it. Eventually, they both get in. Three brothers fight in a flask when Nikki finally gets out and kisses Valerie. Oh wait, that was Adrian. He triumphantly flies around celebrating the victory of evil powers. Too soon. Using the power of love, Nikki gets out and uses the mysterious ball his mom gave him. And guess what? The damn Ozzy Osbourne gets out, bites Adrian's head off, and spits it into the flask. Valerie kills Nikki and he gets back in hell with the two brothers. Mission accomplished. Papa Devil revives. The two naughty brothers end up in Hitler's... Yeah. While Nikki goes home and enjoys family time with Valerie. Never knew I would say that sentence in my life. Moral of the story? Adam Sandler's the devil for making these movies.